Good morning, everyone. I, uh, I released a video last week. It was the last vlog I put out, and I got a lot of positive response. And the, the video was, uh, it was my Denver vlog, but I talked for a long time about uh, the behind the scenes of, you know, my fantasy football YouTube channel, the different types of things I've been doing to make this into a business and make this into a, a legit media platform one day. And uh, I got a lot of positive response from that video. And it was because, you know, there's a lot of transparency there and that's not something you see a lot, especially when it comes to like money and business nowadays. I don't know why everyone's so uncomfortable talking about money all the time. I'm glad you guys enjoyed that because that's, I love doing that kind of behind the scenes stuff and, and, and being transparent with you guys and showing you really what's going on. So um, this next clip is a talk I had with my business coach and my mentor, Dan DiPiazza. I've been working with him for, I don't know, like eight months now. And we got on a call basically every Friday now, um, just talking about behind the scenes stuff and how I'm going to grow, not only the business, but like as a person and, you know, it goes deeper than that. But this is an unedited raw. There are like maybe uh, two or three things I took out just because maybe there's like time gaps in them or something. But for the most part, this is completely unedited and raw. And this is one of our weekly calls. And since you guys really enjoyed the last kind of behind the scenes stuff, I figured, you know, why not just throw this up there and give you um, I even more of a look behind the scenes and kind of show you what I have or what I've been working on and what's going through my head and uh, and where I'm at in the process of, of building this up. So hopefully y'all enjoy. Throughout the video, I, th I believe his Instagram is going to be linked on top of his portion of the screen as you get a little deeper into the conversation uh, as well as mine. So if you wanna follow us on Instagram, you can go do that. He works with um, entrepreneurs that are currently making you know five to six figures a year, whether it's freelancing or building a business, and he tries to take them to um, high six, seven figures. So I'm probably one of his lower earning clients for sure, but he's a really good dude. So if any of you guys are, you know, in, in the midst of building up a company or building up a, a freelance, you know, gig or whatever, and you need direction or you need help or whatever, big dog approved, go check Dan out. You could slide into his DMS on Instagram anytime you want. He is super engaged with his audience and, uh, he's always looking for new people to work with because it's obviously his passion. So Definitely check Dan out on Instagram. Make sure you give him a follow. Um, and obviously, if you're interested in working with him, you could drop a comment down below or just DM him on, on Instagram. But uh, I hope you all enjoy. If you do, make sure you hit the thumbs up on the video. And uh, and then I'll see you all tomorrow for the fantasy video. Peace. <laughs>
so I was trying to step back and look at the bigger picture and it, it's, it keeps kind of coming back to the same conclusion for me. And I think I've kind of known, not known this all along, but maybe subconsciously I have. And when I look at where I want to be or what I want to be doing in five or 10 years, I really think it's, it's, it's what you're doing in the sense that like, you know, I want to, if I had to like put it in a phrase, it's like, I want to help young entrepreneurs um, build businesses that uh, support their lifestyle by using the, using their passion to build the business by being their true authentic self, I guess I could say. If I, if I could yep. put it in one like, you know, phrase, I guess that's, that's the ultimate goal. That's where I want to be. Saying that, uh, I don't feel like this is what I was talking about last week when I'm like, there are future visions I have for myself, but and maybe they're closer than I think. But I think that is far off in the sense that I don't feel comfortable being that guy at all until I've really been through all the trials and tribulations. Like you've gone down the road. So when I come to you for help, I know that you've experienced it and you're not just like talking out of your ass, you know? So right. I want to put myself in that position and, and have gone through, you know, the good, the good patches and the rough patches before I could sit there with a kid who I see in myself and be like, this is where I think you should go. And this is what you should do based off what I've been through, you know? So that's like, I think that's where I want to transition to. And um, in the meantime, I realized that the way I think I get there is through what I'm doing now. And I do see a lot of opportunity and I was actually, so, Yesterday, I was putting together my finances, basically. I was looking at all the expenses and incomes that I've brought in throughout the year so far. And I think in 20, 2018, I think I'm going to be, uh, I think I'm going to have pulled in around $40,000 just from fantasy football stuff. Excellent. So, yeah, when I saw that number, I was a lot higher than I, I thought it was going to be around twenty five, but it was around $40,000 when I- Full-time job. Everything together. And- uh, It's amazing. And yeah, so I see a few big opportunities in terms of growth and where I could, uh, you know, multiply that. It's one, it's like basically I've done all of this organically, right? So yep. there is the paid advertising, which yep. I did nothing. Like I know how to do that, right? I'm, I'm within the platforms and I've done them plenty of times. Uh, but I, I just wanted to keep expenses low this year, right? As low as I possibly could and see what I could output. So my one, one asset of growth would definitely be towards paid advertising. I think what I'm going to do is as soon as the off season ends, like basically the income that I make off fantasy football is based around my audience size. So I think I'm going to create, um, once I start doing videos in the off season, create a few different ads, a few different video ads, um, and just run a few dollars a day to them and build up warm audiences throughout the off season. Uh, and you can get those, you know, for like 10 second video views, like a, a cent yep. on Facebook or Instagram, whatever, right? And just put in like $5 a day throughout the months leading up to the summer. And I think that will almost pay for itself. And it's not even like, I don't even think I'm going to be really tracking these because I'm not going to be converting them into purchases right now, but just right. have them go. It's a pain in the ass with Facebook and Instagram advertising because you can't put like their pixel on like a YouTube page, obviously. Um, but I think I'm just going to run it to, you know, I wouldn't have to get into the statistics, but like that's one big growth opportunity that I did not take advantage of. And I still did well, just straight organically. So Paid marketing is something that I'm definitely going to get into as soon as the off season starts. Uh, the second, and we talked about it was just advertising or sponsorships for my video. And there's so many people making so much money off of advertising through content creation. So that's going to be another big growth sector. And uh, the third thing I think will be outsourcing more. So I need to give away all the editing. I need to, I think next year is going to be a big Whoa. year in which I just invest. I think I just need to invest. Yeah people and in I guess the marketing so it's instead of this year where I was looking at as more of like don't spend any money and see what you could do and just how much profit you could bring in look at this as more of a long-term view and see how I could build the systems and um, and the people around the infrastructure around so I think I need yep. to look at it as more of a invest like 2018 or 2019 needs to be more of an investment year so that in 2020 it can be exponential growth because I have all of the parts in place I guess so it's like outsourcing paid marketing and sponsorships. I think those are like the three main focuses I can have that I didn't tap into at all in 2018 that I can grow upon next year. Does that make sense? So, so it makes perfect sense. So, so <laughs> systems and, um, and paid advertising are 
Um, they'll cost, I mean, that's, those are investments. And then what about, um, so and sponsorships are going to bring in money. What, talk to me about what that, what that looks like with revenue potentially, like how much could you bring in? How would you find people to sponsor you? What would it look like? Uh, so I think what I would do for sponsorships and I actually did start writing down a list. So I listen to a lot of fantasy football podcasts outside of my, like doing my own research for it. And I know a lot of these guys have sponsors within the industry, whether it's just like StubHub or Ticketmaster or, um, you know, Dollar Shave Club. And I think what I would do is pretty much write down a list of like 20 to 25 potential sponsors that I see advertising through those videos and just reach out to their marketing team. And I think if I reached out to like 25, 30, 50 of them even, um, I would probably get responses from a few of them. And I think I could probably work off that. And it's not like, like last summer, if I tried to do this, I probably didn't have enough of a following for them to be like, yeah, you know, we're, we're serious about this. But by next summer, I'll probably be around like 15,000, you know, uh, maybe more than that. And they'll be like, okay, you know, he's like a, a medium sized influencer. And they would definitely take a look at that. So I think it would be more of just me being like really intentional and proactive about it. I'm thinking like, I mean, definitely with what you're doing now, that will, that will, you'll, you'll do better next year than you did this year for sure. And then my question is like, how do you, um, because building out the systems and bringing people in to help you edit and then also, um, uh, paid advertising will cost money. So how do you make sure that like the, what you're developing is designed to, to make more money? Like, have you thought about different new products to sell? Have you thought about how you're going to like predictably make more or is it just like oh i'm gonna oh, try all this other like, works okay so like you, you know okay so you're saying like you're you're investing into these things but do you have something that's proving that these investments are going to pay off right um i don't know no not really i just like i don't know i just have always thought about things in terms of like branding and just all these things are just going to help the brand and in the sense that just reinforces sales on the back end like i i don't know i guess i haven't really thought of specifics in terms of like technically what are these things going to end up bringing in revenue wise? I just figure like if they're good, you know, and, and they will solidify the brand more that will in turn, you know, that will work itself out. But I mean, I'm probably looking at that, I guess the wrong way, or maybe I need to dive into that a little deeper, but I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, it, I think what, what will happen is it, it will work, but you have to start conditioning your mind now to look at it as a machine, even though it is your brand and your business you got to start thinking of it as like, okay, if I'm going to be putting money in and hiring people because I've already made this mistake. So I'm just, done, I've already done this. <laughs> like if you're going to start hiring people and bring, bring people on to help you with stuff and then also paying to promote yourself, it has to be to a predictable back end that you know is going to create money on the back end. So it's like, it has to, it has to, it has to be a funnel, you know, and it doesn't have to be like a traditional internet marketer funnel, but it has to be whatever your funnel is going to be. It has to bring them to a point where you can tell if what you're doing is creating uh, more buyers because you're not at a place where you can just be like, I'm just branding to brand. That's Coca-Cola stuff, but they can throw money at it. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But every dollar that you spend has to count. Yeah, I hear you. You know? Yeah. I wish like the only problem with what I like, like I could do that with what I'm saying basically. It just sucks that fucking the way I would be advertising through like Facebook or Instagram. Like I could lead them to a lead page, right? And I could track those people and get the email addresses and see if they purchase shit. But maybe that, maybe that would be a smarter play. Would rather than sending them right to my YouTube page, send them to like uh, a, a landing page or a lead page in which they could sign up for like the email list and then track it that way. I get what you're that's, saying. Yeah. I say the same shit with my clients because they're just like, oh, what if we do this? And I'm like, that's great. But like, listen, like you hired me and you're paying me this. Like I would, I would feel more comfortable if we had fucking numbers in front that I could be like, this is what I'm helping you with. You know what I mean? Yeah. Take your own advice. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I have, I have a tendency not to do that. Me too. But yeah, but it's, um, I would send them to a lead page, you know, and there's like, there are ways to do it where it's not like you can still be your brand and on brand, just like something that you can track. And then I yeah. still think that there's a, there's work to be done in figuring out which, how you're going to keep people engaged and sell them in the off season. It's not going to, it's not going to do well if it's only a seasonal business. Yeah. I guess if well, like what, what have you thought about with that? Like, how would you, how can you continue to make sales not during football season? I don't know. I'm still kind of coming up blank on that. Okay. That's going to be a big, so like, okay, let's think about like this. I made a video the other day, warrior versus CEO, you know? And like, I think we even talked about this. Yeah, we did. It's funny we did. Being, this is, this is our conversation actually. That's why I made the video. Like, thinking of the warrior going to work and doing the work, the CEO and the, the, the commander 
thinking about like, okay, from a business perspective, like how do I make sure that everything is always taken care of and that there's no dips, you know, and the seasonal thing, it, hearing it for me creates anxiety just thinking about it for you because I don't want there to be any blackout periods. I want it to be where you always have a product to sell, you know, mm -hmm. um, and you always have some sort of consistent revenue option. Cause you know what should always, should always gets weird and you never, you, you could have an amazing season, but then things happen and you just, you want to make sure that you always have something that isn't dependent on, you know, on a singular event. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's going to be a big thing for you to solve. Yeah, it is. Um, what do you think about like, another live event in the off season. Obviously that won't take care of everything, but it's not a bad idea. It's good for community building. If you can really make it profitable, but think about how much logistics that takes. And there's, it's a lot of effort involved in that. Yeah. Um, I, and I would, I would try to find something that you can sell an infinite number of. Yeah. So not scale. Yeah. Be able to scale it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would, I would, um, go internet marketer basics on this and go, okay, I'm collecting email addresses and I'm creating something that's on brand, but that I can tell an infinite number of, um, because that's going to create the recurring backbone for you where you're not going to have to worry about, you're not going to be like, Oh, I hope that the draft guide sells well this year. That's not a good model. Yeah, I know that like, it, that like kind of is my model right now. Too. Yeah. And, and you know what, to your credit, it's working and it's working better every year. So you might do 80K next year and be like, I just made 80K on a draft guide. Like, awesome. But that still would be a really well-paying hustle. Yes. Yeah. You know, what do people look for in the off season? They just stop buying stuff. Uh, I mean, they look to other sports really. Yeah. Like, do you think, what do you, do you think like, I don't know, maybe looking for, it's it, like, I, I don't do, the other, like I like the other sports and I watch them, but not religiously like I do with football. Yeah, it's not your zone. Yeah. Do you think like finding an expert in one of those fields and and put them on, like let him kind of take over my channel during the winter for like a specific sport or something? And in that case, be like, listen, you're going to be me, but for basketball because that's during the winter, you know, and be like, I'll let you, you know, put together a guide. I'll let you do that kind of shit. You know what I mean? Because it's like the content kind of stalls throughout the uh the growth at least the the growth that i see during the summer definitely stalls throughout the winter but if i had someone you know touching on basketball and baseball mm -hmm. right, which would be a little weird because it's like you know my youtube channel is like nick ercolano but like the brand i guess is i don't know like wh what do you think about that i thought about that before but i'm like i don't know like how i feel about that really yeah you have to think about how you feel personally about it but it's not actually a bad idea because then you're creating like Cause there's a separation between Nick or Colano and BDGE, you yeah. know, like your, your company, you have to decide if it's Nick or as a, as a personality who sells stuff or if it's, or if it's a company and organization that provides entertainment and information on fantasy sports. I could do two. I mean, I could, it could be two different things, right? You could be like Nick or Colano, the head of this fantasy sports company. Yes. Yeah, so maybe I need, I need to start looking at it that way. That's that's how you take it from a hustle to a company, and you think, well, then then the sales never die because there's always sports being played. Now, are, now is your existing audience are they interested in other sports, or would you have to find a, a, a lot of new people? Um, I would probably have to find a, a semi new audience, but I'm sure there's a lot of overlap. Crossover. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of overlap. Um, I'm not too worried about that. And since I already have a pretty significant size, like someone came on the video, like we would, I would have like good ranking in all the search terms. If it was someone was like, the title was like, Oh, 2018 fantasy baseball or whatever. It was like rankings for next year. Like I would probably rank pretty highly on YouTube just because my subscriber base is already pretty high. Right. So it probably wouldn't be that hard to build on top of that. My, the only concern I have is just like, it's going to be hard finding someone who's as high while and like not in a narcissistic way but oh, yeah. oh i get it you know what i mean like i i need someone if i'm gonna put them on my channel and let them be a face like video wise of my youtube channel mm -hmm. like i need to make sure that you know he's up like he's as good as i am with basketball or, or she he or you don't she. know that actually might be a better idea to be honest that is, honestly it is a better idea knowing that your audience is 90 percent 95 percent male yeah that's very true 
that's actually smart. But like, where the fuck do I find this person? They exist. I mean, that's certainly an option. So like that, I think that's something to explore, you know, yeah. if, if it's not the answer, it might lead you to the answer. Yeah. I think that's really, because like I've been trying to build this business. I haven't separated the two. I haven't separated owner of fantasy sport business and fantasy sport business. Right. And I keep thinking that like fantasy sport business is only me, you know, and like right. that I need to, yeah, I need to separate the two. And I, I need to like, that, that's my only hesitation is just fucking trying to find someone that I think compliments me well. And that I'm like comfortable with like, giving them, empowering them and just be like, yeah, bro, this is your audience now too as well. So like, do your thing. You know what I mean? Because I don't see, it's not very often I see someone that I relate to in the sense of like creating content, especially in this, in this yeah. industry, you know, so it's, it's tough. I guess I got to, that's like my next thing is to try to start, at least think about where I could find that person. I mean, you could even, ju- you could even just put an ad on your channel or put a video out saying, Hey, I'm considering doing this. Yeah. Are you out there? The title Absolutely. of the video could be something like, you know, it's like big, yeah. big dogs how to eat, you know, and be like, and you could just make it very honest. Like, Hey, listen, I'm looking to expand this into a real thing into like a real company that encompasses like lots of different fantasy sports. And I'm looking for someone who can do X, Y, Z. And like, you don't have to take someone that you don't think is great. You could just, if they're not great, then you don't have to bring them on. But like, that's where you start at your audience. Yeah. And yeah. they would, they would know you well enough to know like if they're really big fans, like how you like things and, and they would, hopefully they would have a little bit of your flavor already, you know? Yeah, yeah. And that's one of the things when I started bringing on like bloggers, like the first thing I sent to them was like, listen, don't try to fucking write like other fantasy people. Don't try to write like me, like be so authentically you. And if, if like, if you're good, like if I like what you bring to the table, then I will bring you on. But like, I'm not really looking for necessarily like the numbers and the stats you bring i'm so much more looking for like who you are kind of as a person and that's what i'm looking for more so in this so yeah that's that would probably be the first place i guess i would look for it so i'll make a video yeah. yeah start with your audience and if you want and if you want to invest money like i would say yeah i would say i was also thinking you know how big is your email list uh not that big it's like 2000 maybe that's pretty good i would send an email out too okay pretty good yeah, I would start with the audience. There's gonna, there's gonna be some. There will be a lot of people who are interested in doing it. There might not be any good people, but there might be. Yeah. You know. Okay. Um, so that could be one possible answer, and I, I would play with that for a little bit, because yeah, because like start to think about it more. Like start to think about the company as an independent thing that you're running, but you're not connected to it. It's not you. Yeah, I, I kept thinking of them as the same, and I guess it's like the way I need to think about it as if, as if like Elon Musk just randomly started making, just randomly started doing a vlog and it was like yeah. Elon Musk on YouTube. Right. And he like talked yeah. about Tesla within the, the right. vlog, but they're like two completely different revenue things. Right. Yeah. It's not the same. Like, yeah, he runs it uh, and he's very, he loves it, but it's not, you know, it's not, it's not him, you know? Yeah. And I think, I think like subconsciously also like the long, long term play, the long tail of this whole thing is like, you know, content is key to, building a business, right? So my five to 10 year plan would be to help young entrepreneurs. And the vlogging is really a five year plan of content. That's just like nothing. You know what I mean? It's just like yep. down that path. And then in five years when, when big dogs is big, and then I'm finally getting like a lot of people watching my vlogs. And then I'm like, listen, I'm opening up this blah, 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 whatever. There you go. That's it. That's and And, and so you, so you look at it as you look at it as I'm just, I'm building this company and it has to be built like a company. So that it doesn't have to be five years, two years, three years, five years. Yeah. You can point back at it and say, look what I just did. Right. That's what it's about. So don't get lost in the day to day of like, oh, you know, the guide and th- like, that's part of it, but it's all just tools to build this company, which then you can use as an example of you as an entrepreneur. Yes, exactly. You know, boom, there we go. So that's your goal. Okay. Yeah. I guess I was looking at things from such like a critical, like number revenue standpoint where I'm like, yeah, this is what I need to do next year and do this year over year over year, because that's going to be my main income stream rather than like, to look at it from the big picture. This is what I want to do in a couple of years. And these are the pieces that are going to get me there. Not just like, these are going to help me survive year over year over year until I get yeah, there. No. I mean, and think about like this too, like 
if you build this out right, this is a media company. You can just sell that to somebody else. You can have your full entrepreneur story where you build this up as a content platform. It started off as a content platform with just you. You empower other people to help you create content for it. You want to, you want to get out of the content. Your goal is to be creating the content. You're only doing that now because you're good at it and your skill set that you're, that you're leading with. That's what I did. You lead with that, but then you put in the work, you get other people that who, who actually might be better than you in some ways. You slide them in there. I, wow. Surprise, surprise. No, 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 no. I know you just compared yourself to, to Elon. Low key, I caught that. Uh, but I actually disrespected myself in that. <laughs> but you, um, you get other people to start doing the work for you, and then you treat it as just this this is just your vehicle, then you can sell it, man. Media companies like, I mean, this is like a huge example, but LA times just sold for half a billion dollars. Like, you know, these are, and this is a media and publication company. You're creating publications and rich media and you're building an audience and a follower base. Like you could sell this to fuck, you know, FanDuel in five years, you know, yeah. and they'll just eat it up. They'll, I mean, you should look to see how much they're paying for it. Cause they'll, they're buying up other little companies. You can be sure of that. They might pay you a cool 10, 20 mil to take this off your hands. <laughs> really? I'm serious. I'm not no, kidding. No, I know you are. It's just like fucking yeah. <laughs> crazy amounts of money. It's crazy, um, but it's real. I know. I know. This is a good talk already. And we're only like 17 minutes into it. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. So, so start thinking about that. So I, I think like my next action step has to be looking for someone to be able to provide the content when I can't at least for the off season. Um, yes. and maybe, you know, during the season. I, and that's the other thing too. It kind of sucks. Like during the season, I'm a one man show because I see all these other YouTube channels and stuff and the, they're all multiple people for the most part. Yeah. You just, you just need, you got to start thinking about it as a real company and start building it out as if you're the CEO. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and you're just, you're the CEO and you're the main content creator, but you know, and the, you could always, this could always be your personal hustle, but that, is that sounds very hard <laughs> that's what i keep telling myself that it's it's like it's mine and it's my thing and i just i know like in the back of my head it's just like not scalable not scalable not, not scalable. scalable it's like yeah. shut up and do it shut up and do it I'm yeah like, oh, but yeah i definitely came to that realization and i just like i don't know i guess i'm just like oh good things are happening so i'm just gonna keep fucking pushing through it and pushing through it's it good. But like, yeah. it is good you are on an upswing you're in a positive trend yeah I just have to make sure that, uh, that, yeah, that I'm looking at it from a broader perspective of things and I need to separate the two. Yeah. I guess I just never really said it out loud. I had like thought of it and I figured like when the time come came, I would have, you know, I would do it, but time's here. Yeah, it's here. <laughs> <laughs> it's here. You know, you should go in. And so, so think about too, like what systems can you create inside of the business to make it so that if you are still going to be creating a lot of content, you can only, you just go in and do the video and you just record it and you don't do fucking anything else. Yeah. That's big goals. Oh, it's because I mean, even just getting a thumbnail, right? You're right. It might take 40 minutes to design a great thumbnail. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, and I know, I know this stuff, man. So like, think about make, make a list of like all the things you do, you know, on a daily basis to help the channel run and try to find ways that you can get yourself out of every single one, except the main part of the content. And um, when you do invest money, invest it towards someone who can help you with that. And then um, start finding someone who can cover the gaps. And, all. and would you, would you make guides on other um, fantasy sports too? Is that how you do it? Yeah, I think so. I think like the reason I would, I would bring someone on not only to keep the audience engaged and bring in more followers, but I would do it. So, um, you know, they would be able to, to create, products and obviously I would profit a lot less because I would you know I would split the profits with them or whatever or I don't know I would have to think about how that would work yeah because I don't know if you would I mean you might give them something but I don't know if it would be 50 50 let's let's yeah that's true. I, I built the audience I guess it's definitely you built the audience and you give them the platform and people especially especially you want to find like talent that maybe isn't that well known but they're like hungry and they can post have them one of the advantages is you can post your own I'll, I'll you put your own links in the, in your, in the channel description and you'll get followers. Like you're going to build off my channel. Yeah. You know? You're going to build off my IG, build off my email list. Like this is helpful for you. Sell yeah. that, you know, you're an influencer, sell that. I wouldn't go in as Mr. Friendly, you know, like in terms of the money, you got to build your fucking company. They just want the platform. They just want to get put on, give them a little bit. They'll be happy. Um, I guess when the time comes, I could think of that, yeah. but I just think but like find, 
a hot girl, that would be the best possible solution. Yeah. I just, I, I don't know how many hot girls there are that are like into, into this shit. Not that many. I'll creep through. Yeah. I mean, there's like very few like normal fucking old dudes that are even good at this kind of thing. So it's like, I mean, I'm sure there are one or two, but if, if that's the case, if, if there's a hot girl that's really good at this, then they probably already have their own audience and platform, you know? Yeah, true. You know, yeah. and, and may, maybe it's like, maybe you start off with like during the, during the seat, during the off season for other sports, you start off with just doing like to test it out. You start doing interviews with other people in different spaces to get their take on what's happening and you start building on it that way. And, you know, but like just to get, in the followers get in the subscribers during the off season and i think the guides too are good but that's only like tier one of the product offering so i think you have to figure out what comes after that because i'm trying to think of like i'm trying to think of like the bigger brands in the industry and like what their revenue drivers are and they they sell i mean they all offer guides they all offer they don't offer that many products other than just like they have the website traffic that's like what they get they get a lot of website traffic they offer guides and like <laughs> exclusive content that are like blog posts and stuff but it's not like it, it's nothing like revolutionary yeah like i know it's, there's, there's something there that yeah. like we can't quite squeeze out that i'm not sure what it is but there's no one really doing anything unique other than just like exclusive content that they think is going to help their audience more than someone else and just um, just remember just because they're the leaders in the space doesn't mean that they know everything and that they have all the best ideas they might yeah no most of these guys are 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 writers and journalists first not business yeah. guys i'm not i'm not worried that like all the ideas are taken i'm just i'm trying to think of what what it is that i'm missing that i could put into the audience like i'm thinking of it so one of the um the best pieces of advice i ever got from a mentor of mine his name is jay and he used to be like the the vp at sony and a bunch of different other capital records all these crazy big media companies and he's like whenever i work with a new company or i'm building or i'm building one my first thought is who am I going to sell this to? Who am I going to sell this company to? So like when I think, uh, so like even before he's put the first dollar into the new company he's building, he's thinking, who is this eventually going to go to? Cause I don't plan on running this for 20 years or even 10 years. Like I'm going to build this thing. Cause he's a serial entrepreneur and he builds things up and he flips them. But like, he's like, who am I going to sell this to? Is it going to be Amazon? Is it going to be, you know, Nike? Like who's it going to go to? And so you got to think like as an acquiring company, if someone else was to come in and buy your company, they'd want to see multiple different revenue sources. You can't just be like, well, we got our guides. As long as they're doing well, you're straight. You'd have to have like tiers yeah. of different offerings. Part of that is traffic because they want the platform and you can, you can make money off traffic, but it takes a lot of traffic. Yeah. And I wouldn't even think of traffic. It, it, it's more of in a sense, like, um, I guess it would go back to the advertising on my channel and, uh, and the sponsorships on my channel. Cause that's the same thing as, as, you know, ads on your, on your website. It's just in a different, different way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And the ads are definitely part of it. Like, yeah, will, but there, there's something on the product side that we're not seeing yet that once you figure it out, I think will unlock a, a key revenue component for you. Yeah, me too. I can't think of what it is, which is weird because I've, I've been thinking about like what it could be for a long time and it just hasn't really come to light yet. Well, I mean, work on, work on fixing the first problem, which is just like creating some consistency across the year and having it turn into a real company that is now a fantasy sports company and not just Nick reporting on fantasy football. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's a difference. Make that transition. And then when you bring in more people, you know, and more, people, more collaborators, I think you'll probably start getting more ideas as well. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, I definitely need to make that shift. Dun, 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 dun. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let me write something down real quick. Yeah, I'm going to send you this recording too. Okay. Cool. So she can review it. I saw it was recording. I was like, what are we, what are we doing with this? You have, mm-hmm. you have my permission to put this anywhere, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to put up the piece where I'm talking about Jay. And I'm going to tag him on Instagram and see if he says anything. This is exciting, man, because you're really, you're, you're moving into a space where like it's, there's a lot of people in it, but no one's re- I mean, and people are crushing it, but there's opportunity here because there's a lot of momentum and energy, but no one really knows what to do with it. Yep. And whoever's you know? the most creative and innovative is going to win. Yeah. I don't think anyone's more fucking, at least more driven to be creative and innovative than I am. But you're gonna you're gonna figure out something that's gonna start a chain reaction. The guys are just they're just the they're like the entry level. There is more to this, and there's yeah. a ton, and with all with all these people in the space, there's a ton of money. If there's that many people willing to to actually play fantasy, then they'll invest in other things, 
because they're addicted to it. There's so, there's, there is so much like innovation to be had here. I just need to. So for next week, uh, why don't you spend the next few days like thinking about one year plan for expansion during the new year mm -hmm. and think about how that might look. Uh, it might be a good time to post a video on your channel. I don't know. It's up to you, but like start getting your feelers out for that and figure out how you're going to find that person, at least for the next sport. And then also do some brainstorming on potential product uh, ideas or service ideas, depending. And then next week at this time, we'll just go over that. Okay. Obviously feel free to hit me up too. And do you think like with this new person, they will be good just being put on and given the audience and the platform? Because I don't want to like be like, yeah, this guy's coming on to talk, you know, basketball. And then, and obviously this is going to come down to whoever it is I hire and, and whoever I bring on, but like, then then be like, oh yeah, here's one video. And then like, oh, the next week he's like, oh, you know, some emergency came up. I can't get the video on. And like, I, it's going to be subjective, I guess, person to person. But like, oh, I guess that's, that's part of there's, fucking. Yeah, there's going to be some of that for sure. Definitely. That, that's going to happen. Your goal is to find the best person to fill the spots because you can't fucking do it all the time anymore. I'm not going to find the perfect person. I could just, the best I could do is find the best possible person, right? Yeah. And you're going to, you're not, you might not find them right away. You will find them. It might take you, you might have to, you know, even ESPN goes through tons of hosts. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like you're going to have to find a few people and you'll keep, you'll, you'll figure it out. But like, it's just, it's just an expansion and a step, you know, and it's, it is a little bit risky, you know, and you know, you can always depend on you to put out a video or if you don't put out one, it's your audience. So you can do whatever you want, but it's going to, you're going to have to, but you know, I think you should uh, do everyone on a trial basis. So it shouldn't be like, okay, this is the person. It should be like, you should introduce them to the audience so that your audience knows that they have your seal of approval. Um, and just with the context of, hey, we're going to be bringing on new people to talk about sports uh, in the off season, football off season. So here's this first person. And over time, you'll find the right person to like any, to fulfill each role. Yeah. Okay. You know, test okay. them out yeah. first. Don't, I, don't guess I never really thought of it like trying to build out like a, a media fantasy sports, almost like, a, almost like an ESPN version. Yeah. Yes. That's what it is, though. Yeah, that's true. At the, uh, at the bigger level. ESPN might buy this shit. Fuck that. I wouldn't sell them. Fuck them. <laughs> oh, well, talk to me in five years. Yeah, when they slap that money. <laughs> they slap that money and they're like, oh, how do you feel about 25 mil? You're like, I love you. Hand over the chain. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. You're like, great, I already have the chain. I know what I got to do now. Um, yeah. You actually care now I'm thinking about it. If I put this call on my channel in my next vlog. That's great. You should obviously like tell them be like, if you guys, anyone's looking for a business coach, hire me, not Dan. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I would, yeah. You're like, get, get your start early in five yeah. years. I'll have a lot of things to tell you. Um, absolutely. I'll send you this after the call. And yeah, this is dope, man. Like this is you really stepping into your role as like, okay, there's a big difference between uh, fantasy football, um, enthusiast that makes money with it to the CEO of a new media company. And it's a media company that specializes in fantasy sports, but that's just what the niche is. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a big difference. So you yeah. start thinking about yourself differently. Yeah. Very differently. That's when I got to start thinking about all the moving pieces, like who's going to take care of Instagram posts. Who's going to yes. take care of, there you like go. I know, I know all this shit. I just like, it, yeah. it's hard to see it when you're in the fucking trenches all the time, you know? Preaching to the choir. I know, I know. That's Preaching what, to the that's choir. What I pay you for. So, yeah. So, yeah, man. Uh, I got to hop off here. This was a very productive call. I agree. I'm very proud of you. You're doing great work. You have Thank a you. vision in front of you. Uh, I think you also have a fucking open market that you can just absolutely destroy. So, there's actually some jealousy there. You're jealous of this weather. I'm jealous of your entire industry. I might trade. <laughs> cool, man. Nah, um, good, 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 good talk today, my man. Good talk. Um, good talk. I, I'll uh, I'll have everything ready for next week and I'll uh, I'll shoot you. I'm sure we'll we'll talk within the week and stuff. Yeah, we'll talk this week and as soon as this is done downloading, I'll shoot you the recording. Awesome. Thanks, sir. Later, brother. Peace. Peace. Bye.